Hey, beautiful soul. Welcome to Spirit Speakeasy. I'm Joy Giovanni, joyful medium. I'm a working psychic medium, energy healer, and spiritual gifts mentor. This podcast is like a seat at the table in a secret club, but with mediums, mystics, and the spiritual luminaries of our time. So come behind the velvet ropes with me and see inside my world as I chat insider style with profoundly gifted souls. We go deep, share juicy stories, laugh a lot, and it wouldn't be a speakeasy without great insider secrets and tips. You might even learn that you have some gifts of your own. So step inside the spirit speakeasy. Hey, beautiful soul. Welcome in to spirit speakeasy. I As always, I'm really excited to share these episodes with you. Today we have another very special channeled episode with the Violet Flame Collective and my colleague and friend who helps to hold space and ask the questions, uh, Crystal. This episode, this um, experience of receiving this channeled message is really cool. Honestly, I feel like these keep getting better and better as we go, as we build the energy, as the collaboration between Crystal and the Violet Flame and I continue to grow and grow. In this session, I just re-listened to it earlier today, actually. When I'm channeling, I don't um, remember what was said, and often I'm I'm really not aware of what was said. So uh, I listened to it back today, a couple weeks after we recorded it, and I could feel my energy shift just from listening to the episode, which was really cool. And actually, Crystal asks a question about that. It's one of her first questions is um, wanting to understand, you know, what's happening besides just the words we're receiving? What is the energy happening? She had taken some notes on one of the previous sessions. And then she said when she reread her notes, it, it kind of didn't make sense. And so they give a really deep explanation of that. Uh, she also Crystal asks some questions about that mind, body, soul connection, and the Violet Flame does an amazing job of explaining um, the soul, what carries over to the other side or to non-physical with the soul versus like what is more just a part of our human experience. Crystal also asks about supporting loved ones that are going through challenging times or challenging emotions. And there's a great question about that. And then towards the end, uh, the Violet Flame gives a really cool, fun, playful exercise for everyone to try if they want. Um, And I thought that was really fun. It really seems like the conversations are expanding, the information's expanding. I really love getting to do trance mediumship or channeling as it's sometimes called, Uh, but I really love getting to share it with all of you. So uh, again, big thank you to Crystal. I'm so excited for you guys to hear this episode, to receive the information. Uh, And they even talk about how different elements of it can resonate with you on both um, like a physical level and an energetic level. So I'm really curious to see what of this episode resonates with you. If you have missed the other episodes, we've already released two other episodes with the Violet Flame. Episode 32, which is titled Channeled Message from the Violet Flame Collective, Harnessing the Power of the Pause for Divine Guidance and Soul Expansion. And also episode 36, which was called Spirit Guides, Animal Guides, and the Unseen World Around You, a Celestial Q&A with the Violet Flame Collective. So this is the third that we're releasing on the podcast itself. I also have several that I have previously done uh, that are up on my YouTube channel, which is Joy Giovanni Psychic Medium on YouTube. Uh, So I'm really excited for you guys to hear this episode. And without further ado, here is Crystal and the Violet Flame Collective, uh, which of course you will hear in my voice. It is my voice, but it's like not exactly, not really my voice, but it is. Uh, So without further ado, let's get into it. Greetings. Hello. Thank you so much for being with us again. 
and gracing us with your words of wisdom. I'm so delighted to be able to talk with you again. And so to begin, I do have a question, but it is somewhat attached to a bit of a story. So bear with me. Um, I, I listened to the first time that we spoke together on the um, podcast, The Spirit Speakeasy. And when I was listening to it, um, I was very much enjoying it, but I was trying to take notes. And I found, first of all, taking notes while I was listening to be kind of difficult. Um, for me, that's a little unusual because I am in education and taking notes is sort of second nature to me. So that was, that was unusual. You know, the note taking was difficult. And then when I went back and I read the notes, they, they didn't really make that much sense. Not that I couldn't understand them, but they didn't seem to reflect what I thought I was hearing as I listened. So, I pondered on that a little bit. I, I found that interesting. And um, I remembered back to a time when, when I had talked with some people a, about channeling and, and that experience and, you know, listening to channeled messages. And I know that there is a theory about perhaps there being more to the message than meets the surface. In other words, there might be more being transmitted for, for lack, lack of a better word, um, maybe multiple messages even, or messages beneath the ones uh, on the surface when you speak, um, you being the group that we are referring to as the Violet Flame Collective. Um, and so I thought, well, that, that's kind of interesting. Or maybe it's because um, people that are a little bit sensitive or in tuned with their gifts may be picking up on, you know, more to the communication than what's on the surface. Um, in fact, uh, another listener who had listened to that same uh, recording mentioned something similar, uh, where she felt that she was picking up on something more, I guess, is, is how I would say it. So my question is, What's happening there? Is that happening? Are, are we indeed picking up more than, than what we're hearing on the surface? Are there uh, multiple messages or intentions or communications going on um, when you are in our presence and when you are speaking to us? This is a wonderful question, and we will explain it in a few different ways. But first, we would like to acknowledge that Every human being is sensitive. Every human being is an energetic being. Every human being is a soul and currently embodied in these physical bodies. But <clears throat> when you are being human, you are doing so much more than just processing in the physical plane or in the physical world. So while you cognate through the human brain and the uh, s signals and uh, other ways of communication that you experience through your human body, you are also communicating at all times on a soul level and on an energetic level. So that is always happening, whether you are listening to messages that we share or whether you are just engaging in conversation between one another. Now, if you think about this, you know it to be true that while someone might be making a statement to you, consciously, subconsciously, unconsciously, there are emotions happening that they are emitting from their soul, from their system. There is also body language that is happening. And some of this language is resistant and some of it is sharing more detail. There are so many things happening. Versions of past memories that they had are springing in and being drawn from, often in a very unconscious way, as part of what they are trying to express to you in that moment in this example. So many, many things are always happening. And you are all sensitive, whether you identify that way in this current moment or not. Uh, so that that's one element. And the next element is that, yes, many forms of communication are happening when we communicate with you. So 
uh, it is most easily translated into the idea of vibrational frequency uh, when you think about the levels of communication. Now, the more dense an object, the more solid it is. Obviously, the more quicker the vibration, the less dense, the more non-physically focused, for example. So while we are a collective of entirely non-physical beings, we vibrate at a certain vibrational frequency. So the words coming through are heard by your physical ears and processed by your human brains, but the energetic vibration that you are matching that your intelligent system within your physical body, energetic body, auric field, soul are tipping in or raising or lifting up like antenna to match the vibrational frequency of the messaging we share. It is why even though perhaps there are certain things we might share that you haven't heard quite in that way, they still resonate deeply inside of you. It is because there are is some place inside of you, and again, not a physical place, an energetic place, that has resonant frequency with something that we are sharing. And even if someone doesn't feel or sense this additional frequency happening, such as you described, it's still happening for them. There are segments of them or parts of them that are always striving to heal, striving to grow, striving for learning, for wisdom, for depth and discovery. It's why you're here. So all of these subtle parts of you are always attuning, stretching, reaching, tipping into different frequencies. And that's what's happening. The vibration that we offer also has some resonant healing that happens with it. And for some people, it is just about letting that vibration wash over them in the background. Uh, for example, if someone was to listen to the podcast episode that you mentioned in the background while they were cleaning their house, they would still be receiving the vibrational frequency and their energy system, which is divinely co-created and intelligent, will be uh, attuning to some of the frequencies that we are offering. And there are many levels this can happen on. The auditory processing exchange, probably the simplest of those levels that this is happening on. And you take in so many cues to further educate your systems throughout the day. This is simply another variety that's being offered to you. Wow. Oh, that's magical. That's a lot to think about. I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing is that we're, we're listening with more than our ears or hearing more than that's with right. our ears. <laughs> oh, and the reason why it might mm, seem challenging to note take or to then understand the notes that you have taken is while you're receiving the information, you're receiving on so many different levels. So as you try to dictate, Sometimes the themes are broader than you can dictate or express into small sentences of words based on the energetic packaging, the energetic frequency that we are offering. And so when you are hearing it, you are understanding it, you are resonating with it, you are taking it in, but then to re-articulate it, much like any type of learning, until you've fully integrated the ideas, the principles, and have experienced them, it can feel challenging to regurgitate or restate or note take on that information, but you're still receiving it. It's no different than why often when learning something, human while being, love to listen multiple times to really absorb, integrate, and understand the information from multiple directions and multiple levels. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense because I feel like when I read my notes back, I, I understood intuitively or internally a lot more than what was on that page. Um, but it, that's that's really interesting and, and magical too, um, and I love how that also happens when we're just speaking to each other. Um, I think that opened a lot of uh, possibility for me, at least. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, 
along those lines of um, maybe, you know, a connection or the, the interconnectedness of, you know, so many aspects of our life, including and especially communication. Um, another thing, another wondering that I have that's sort of connected to that is that um, uh, recently for me, and I think a lot of, you know, other people may have come to this um, a long time ago, but this is more recent for me. Um, I've been very, very much interested in the mind, body, soul connection. Um, it's always been, you know, a part of my life. And uh, I think a lot of people uh, would agree to that. But I, I've been I noticing, being aware of um, a lot more connection between those systems uh, than I, I might have realized in the past. I think it goes along with, you know, how we're uh, communicating or listening or hearing on so many different levels. So um, as an example, uh, with Western medicine, take for example, uh, we get a cold, you take medicine, um, you break your ankle, you, you put a cast on it and fix it. Uh, and traditionally in the past, it, it is changing, but in the past, traditionally, we've treated mental health the same way. Um, if you're experiencing depression or dysfunction, for example, you take medicine or chocolate or, or something like that. Um, but the spirit or soul, you know, the third part of that, I, I don't think in at least Western culture um, has been treated in the same way or neglected for, for lack of a better word. Um, not to mention the interconnectedness of all three of those things working together, the mind, the body, the soul, and how they're connected. So putting that together in a question, can, can you explain um, maybe better uh, this, this mind, body, soul, or spirit connection, uh, how, how it's working together, maybe give us insight, uh, on how they function together or affect each other in, in a connected way? Perhaps not better, but we may be able to explain differently or highlight some different segments to think about, uh, some vibrational offerings, if you will. The, Mind, body, soul connection as you understand it in what you call the Western world is different than even some other places in your current earthly culture. There are other cultures that value the soul regardless of any, what you might refer to as afflictions of the mind, of the body. There is something important to be noted that while physical and mental health challenges often do have an energetic cause or component. Uh, once symptoms manifest in the body, it is important to treat them often in several ways. And sometimes it has to do with the belief system of the person experiencing what you would refer to as challenges as to what their individual system is most responsive to. Uh, of course, we want to tread lightly so that no one would construe or confuse our conversation with any type of um, medical advice or mental health advice. And we understand that your intention is just to more deeply understand this connection. Now the soul, as you know, continues on well after the physical body, infinitely in fact, and therefore is not affected by any affliction, so-called, of this side. So meaning, even if a person in a physical body experiences some sort of what you would identify as a mental health challenge, for example, their soul does not carry that same affliction. So once they return to non-physical, they no longer have any of the list of available conditions and labels that they experienced while they're in the physical body. So we do like to highlight that because there is often much concern from people in your world that are very concerned about the soul being damaged or retaining the effects of 
these earthly challenges. All of those challenges belong to the physical and belong to your world. So they do not cross over with the individual. It is why, for example, in mediumistic communication, someone that perhaps was nonverbal or had challenges in the way that they expressed uh, using their cognition to create words and sentences to different degrees, depending on the challenge they experienced, from a mediumship perspective, they would not communicate with those same challenges. They might choose to identify that this specific physical body that they were in in this lifetime experienced those challenges as an identifying factor about them. However, they would no longer experience the challenge of non-communication in this example and would be able to fully communicate and express much about their experience while here. So while these elements are interconnected, they are not necessarily interdependent. Uh, the mind-body connection is much deeper even than current modern medicine understands. It is why starting to emerge are stories even more deeply studied about people who just have a belief and then create a physical condition within the physical body or have a belief and then cure a condition within the physical body or just never receive or are diagnosed with any condition at all. However, there, there are additional things to consider in your world. The physical body, of course, is a living organism and living organisms have different reactions to different conditions, different chemicals, etc. So that's something to consider. Now, is that connected to the soul? Not necessarily, but it is something that the soul experiences through the human existence that wisdom can be gained and retained from. Does this make sense in the way we're explaining it? And are these along the lines of what you're asking? Yes, yes. Um, and this is making me want to go a little deeper, in fact. Um, so uh, let me see if I understand. The the soul, the spirit, um, does not have uh, uh, afflictions, I guess, uh, the way that the body can or, or that the mind can. Um, so I guess a follow-up question would be, uh, what, what does carry over? Um, you know, after we're having this physical experience, this earth experience, um, what, what does come with us? I hope that makes sense. It does. When the soul returns to non-physical, it, it also returns to a segment of infinite intelligence. So you understand essentially what it is that you're asking all of the secrets of the universe, so to speak. Uh, that is all part of the soul's knowledge that is not translated into this human brain, body, physical world, etc. You also will, within your soul, almost like data storage, you will retain all of the information about the personality that you expressed and experienced <clears throat> in this lifetime, and also over the phases of your life while this version of you that we engage with today has a certain set of memories, if you went back in time to a younger version of yourself that was five years old, that version of you has an entirely different set of memories available right at top of mind. All of those memories are stored within the soul, and so all of those memories are retained. The emotional spectrum that is accessible is different on the other side. There are certain emotions that can be experienced here in physical that are not experienced in non-physical because some of those emotions require the illusion of separation to be created as emotions in the system. If you are for the best translation we can give, floating in this warm, loving pool of non-physical infinite intelligence, you really don't have any need for fear or resistance or doubt or disbelief or any of that side of the spectrum of emotions. Those are not bad emotions. They are experienced on this 
side, through the physical system, through the brain cognition that you have on this side. But again, only through the limited perspective can that spectrum of the emotions be experienced. So on the other side, there is the memory of the understanding of those emotions, but not the experience of the emotion. That's interesting. Um, and I think that leads me right to the, the next wondering that I have. Um, speaking of emotions, it, that actually helps me, and I'm going to have to wrap my brain around it a little bit longer, uh, but that helps me understand emotions right now a little bit better on, on this plane of existence of, of why, um, you know, some wouldn't be necessary on a different plane of existence based on uh, circumstances or stimuli. Um, and that makes a lot of sense. So uh, right now, uh, I have two loved ones in my life that are both in the process uh, of healing from from very severe situations um, where the trauma was largely uh, mental or emotional. Um, just to put it plainly, they were they were both in in very emotionally abusive situations. Um, and I know, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people have been in those situations and are working day to day just to try to heal. And, and in some circumstances, just trying to survive and function. Um, so, you know, as a um, somebody who cares very deeply about, about these people, what did advice, guidance, um, vibrational um, message or healing can we give to people who are living with this kind of emotional trauma and are, and are trying to, of course, heal um, from that? This is a beautiful question. And please know that non-physical is always offering vibrational support and, of course, infinite and unconditional love to support in the way that many of you might identify as what you are requesting in prayer uh, or in meditation or in just wonderful thoughts to the universe. Those are echoed back to any loved ones, even the self who's requesting. So we just wanted to make that clear up front that that is always happening. And always these souls who are feeling in turmoil, as you described, are always receiving support and guidance, not only from the non-physical world dimensions planes but also from their own soul now as we described partially earlier some of the soul is expressed through the physical body but some of the soul the larger portion in fact remains in the non-physical dimension that part of the individual soul is unharmed knows that the lack that they are experiencing the pain or anguish or separation that they are experiencing only comes from the limited vantage point that they have only comes from the end of the spectrum of feelings that they are residing in and what's interesting is every soul has come here to learn to grow to expand to explore to play uh, but each of you has something identified as free will, meaning you get to make choices as you go, choices to engage with people that are prickly and kind of invoke the what you identify as a negative side of that spectrum. And we observe so often people choosing through their free will choice to stay in direct relationship and to us, we see it almost as someone who continues to sit on a cactus despite all of the pricklers really getting in there. So sometimes it is just through the learning process and becoming a percentage of discomfort, you know, within their system enough so that they realize they have the power to make a change. They have the power to view the situation differently. They have a power to heal within themselves. There are so many things going on in this world all at one time. And it is such a world of duality when on the other side in the non-physical experience, 
we really see it as such a short period in time where the actual souls themselves are not at odds, are not causing and creating pain for each other. Rather, it is only in the human experience that these souls are at odds. So rest assured that peace will be made back in non-physical when the entirety of perspective is revealed. Uh, however, when the human soul is in physical form and is experiencing the anguish that you describe, we can understand why you would want some type of medicine, energetic or otherwise, to assist them with. There are a few things to consider. One, each human processes and, and learns slightly differently. Uh, two, each human chooses to use free will differently, <laughs> uh, wielding it sometimes for their benefit and, well, ultimately always for their benefit, but sometimes in temporary discomfort. And three, it is not your role to fix anyone, to change anyone, but we do understand deeply in your energy that your intention is to offer support. One of the things we would like to highlight in this time period of human existence and experience, we have touched into it in our prior conversations. When communication abounds from every direction, it is so interesting how humans are not always directly communicating with one another. So if you are intending to offer support to either of these individuals, potentially one of the best things to do would be just to let them know that you are there to offer support in non-judgment. Uh, the other thing to recognize is that, you know, for additional listeners, everyone is in relationship in a different way. So that support might not be desired from that free will choice, meaning they can choose not to accept the support. They can choose to feel at odds with the one who intends to support sometimes. So moreover, it is better to focus on the self, the way you handle your own emotions, the way you react to situations, continuing to gain your own wisdom, continuing to practice on your own emotional spectrum, so that when that person or people are ready and do take up that offer of support, you will have more wisdom, more sensitivity, more feeling to navigate their individual choices, their individual emotions and feelings. If you want just a simple answer, we would say communication is the most important and expressing love. That is actually one of the many reasons that you come here is to learn to express unconditional love in this physical form. It is one of the greatest challenges that you feel from your experience because you experience constant contrast to that in a way that you perceive from your human perspective. So just offering, we would suggest not digging or poking or picking with questions about what was. The more that what was is focused on or complained about or reiterated or dwelled on, the more that those emotions will be recreated in the person in an effort for the system to heal. The soul is requesting healing when that happens, but there are other ways to go about it. Some people prefer physical movement. Some people need to journal to process. Some people are very eager and easily release challenging emotions and get over things as it were. So it really just depends on the individual and what they choose to learn and how they choose to process with it. And some of it is giving them opportunities to turn their own personal emotional lemons into lemonade for the world. So that is part of what is available to them and the spectrum of options when they have been in those types of relationships and when they are ready, willing, and able to heal. And only if they choose and only if they continue to choose. And while that sounds like quite a lot, if you think about it, you know so many people that have chosen to move in a different direction, to release a relationship, to heal from a belief or a pattern or a behavior. It is 
entirely possible. You all are incredible co-creators more than you even realize, constantly co-creating your own reality, but also your experience moment by moment. So this is a long-winded answer to say the best way to offer support is just to offer support, but we would also suggest in a blanket statement way to start to be aware more of when you are wanting to interject help or answers or, you know, from your perspective support uh, when it is not requested. And sometimes that is even more damaging, even more hurtful and can be perceived by the one we wish to care for as uh, even aggressive sometimes. So really communication is key, but understanding that we cannot force the free will of someone else, that you are just making healing or vibrational frequency or support of any kind available to them. And then it is their free will choice to accept, to even engage or to what level. Okay. Thank you. All right. Free will choice. It's everything. And so, um, they, they have approached me. So I, I, what I'm hearing is to, you know, offer and to be non-judgmental and to listen and to just throw that unconditional love out there. And, and of course it's going to be up to them. Uh, frustrating. <laughs> but frustrating, but remember <laughs> divine intelligence runs through each of you at any given moment. And perhaps this is the catalyst they need, their soul is using to propel their human self into the next phase of being for them. But perhaps, perhaps it is, it is just the time period that they are in and they have, as I mentioned, infinite wisdom and intelligence. And so sometimes it is just the validation of that which they already feel. Or if you were to ask them, for example, in which ways would it be most helpful to support them or which behaviors could you do that would be identified by them as receiving support. They truly do know the answer within themselves. Even if they say they don't know, they truly do. That's comforting. That's comforting. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, well, I, I just thought I'd asked if um, you had any um, message or, or intention for anybody who is listening right now. We have so much intention for all of you, but it is based on the intention that you all have for yourselves. It is based on the energetic expansion. Your souls through your human forms are constantly reaching for more divine intelligence, more wisdom, more deeper understanding, more love, more success. Uh, and it is through the reaching that we can create this communication. So keep reaching, keep dreaming, keep wondering, keep exploring. But also, as you mentioned before, the mind, body, soul connection, the body is an incredible instrument available to you as a human that, like we mentioned, perceives much information and translates much information and emotion reverberates through the physical body. So even just becoming more aware, becoming more aware of the thoughts you think or are the thoughts thinking you, becoming more aware of the narrative that you go throughout your day and run inside of your brain, the inner self-talk, the beliefs, the connection to all that is and whether you're choosing to move your awareness to that or to move your awareness to only accepting physical reality as reality. So the more that these intentions are put out, the more that these queries are constructed uh, in energy before words, the more that our intention grows. We have the deepest and most profound love for all of you. And it is our intention to co-create whatever it is that your inspiration desires to be co-created by these conversations, whatever it is that is next that 
tickles your imagination that you then energetically reach for and then potentially translate into words and reach for. Our intention for you is to have everything that you've ever wanted to live more vibrantly, to more deeply understand that you are all entirely connected to source energy at every moment in time that you are in this physical plane. Uh, and, you know, maybe to let a few things go, we have so many intentions for all of you as a whole, whether someone comes and feels this vibrational offering for one moment or for as many hours as we share these conversations together, our intentions are for you to attune to the highest frequency that you desire for the path that you choose to experience in this expression in this lifetime. Wow. I don't know about anybody else, but I intend to fully accept that. Thank you so much for those beautiful words. I, I can very much feel the love and light coming through with every part of me now that I know that I'm listening with far more than just my ears. Um, I'd like to thank you all once again for oh, we being have with one us. more ah. share. As you just mentioned, we do okay. love these conversations and since time is not the same where we are, we could <laughs> chat for hours. We, we do want to say you just said something so profound. You are listening with many aspects all at once. And so too is your body listening to your mind with many aspects all at once. And so too is your human energy field listening. And so too is your soul listening. And so too are the creative components that are all around and non-physical waiting for you to use perhaps law of attraction to attract the things to you that you choose to experience. All the creative components are listening on many levels all at once. You are vibrational energy at the core on all levels. And so even if for five minutes of your day, you are, for example, exercising negative self-talk, your physical body, your mental body, your energetic body, your auric field, all of the creative components and non-physical, that dream house, that bucket of money, that career, whatever it is, that relationship, all of the energy of everything you desire is listening energetically all the time. Wow. Uh, listening has a totally different meaning for me now, um, but that opens up a lot of um, possibility, a lot of thoughts, a lot of things that I think I'll need to, to meditate on. Um, we can I, suggest I, a, a playful exercise oh. if you are open. Yes. We know that you are quite advanced, but we would like to just explain resistance. Resistance is the distance between what you want and the belief that it can be yours. Resistance comes up when you desire something and a belief or a pattern or an emotion rises up again to be healed, but that says, nope, can't have that, not gonna be mine. And sometimes, as part of human nature, you assign different levels of resistance based on how big or large or lofty the item desired is. So we suggest playing this game with something that feels quite insignificant, maybe a stick of gum, maybe a penny, maybe mm, the idea of the color orange, maybe a balloon. And essentially in the morning, when you have the least resistance because you're coming out of fully creative dream state, get the idea in your mind of what it is that you would like to call towards you for the day. It needs to be something that you have no resistance about whatsoever. It's why we suggest something seemingly insignificant like chewing gum, something that you could attract to yourself. Be careful, we don't want you to step in it. And in the morning, you just hold the image of the chewing gum in your mind. Remember the smell. Remember what it feels like to feel the chewing gum. Remember what it feels like to hear the chewing gum being chewed by someone else. Various versions of whatever it is that you are playing with for the day. And then imagine energetically letting it emit from you this idea of chewing gum, 
chewing gum, chewing gum, chewing gum, chewing gum, chewing gum, chewing gum, chewing gum, chewing gum, chewing gum, and just be playful with it and imagine releasing it, emanating it into the universe. Let it go and see how long it takes for chewing gum to make its way to you. This is happening tomorrow for sure. We are sure. so excited to <laughs> hear the feedback of how you all play with this. And again, <laughs> don't step in the gum. Be careful with what you ask for because it will show up in as many interesting ways as you can imagine. The less resistance you have, the quicker it can come and the more playful and joyous and creative ways it can show up. You are playful and creative and source energy beings. So, but remember the, the lower on the scale of resistance that you have to whatever it is, the quicker and it, more playful and creative ways it will appear before you. Well, okay. I'm asking for chocolate. That's happening. This Thank is wonderful. You, so <laughs> you have no resistance to that and you will <laughs> definitely receive it. But it could be any way that you receive it. Perhaps someone will bring you a, a, a little piece of chocolate. Perhaps you will smell chocolate. Perhaps you will hear a, a commercial for chocolate. We, we can't tell you how it will show up, but we're excited to hear how it does. Well, I can't wait. I can't wait to see how this chocolate is going to appear in my life tomorrow. <laughs> So we are practicing manifestation, yes? Yes. Well, attraction, co-creation, sure. resistance, and understanding okay. it. Right. This will be well, then, an incredible is, is there lesson. anything else that you would like to share with us today? <laughs> oh, we, w we wish we could share everything with you right now. We wish we could love you into getting you all out of your own ways to understanding that you are divine co-creators in human form, that... The essence of all creation lives in you and is of infinite intelligence, which is where you are born from and where most of you still reside. So our intention is to continuously move you closer and closer to that understanding through not only these delicious conversations, but also through amusement and play and joy. We have puns. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you again so much for being with us today. And until next time. We have unconditional gratitude and love for you and for every listener and are so grateful that you have agreed to participate in this co-creation. Namaste. So what did you think of this channeled energetic conversation. I really love this one. I loved the last two as well. But like I said in the intro, I feel like the information, the collaboration keeps expanding. And some of you have started sending in questions, which I love. I have to tell you a little tidbit. So right at the tail end of that communication, the Violet Flame was giving that exercise, right? That really fun, playful exercise with the bubble gum. Well, Crystal said in the episode that she was definitely going to try that tool, that playful exercise the next day. And she texted me the next day. Um, and <laughs> she was like, you're never going to believe this. It was like not even, I think it was like maybe a little over 12 hours after we, we had recorded that. Uh, she texted me and she was like, you're not going to believe this. I, I was at work. I walked into the office where several of my colleagues were and someone immediately made a beeline for me and was like, I want you to have this chocolate and put some kind of like chocolate peanut butter cup in her hand and was like, this is for you. So she was like, that's crazy. Even though she is an advanced practitioner at this point and really steeped in this work. It just goes to show how uh, we all still get surprised and, and blown away by this work and by the way the energy works. So that exercise, that tool really works. Uh, I, I encourage you and challenge you to try it, to play with it, to be playful with it. And I even love the explanation that the Violet Flame gave. I haven't heard it quite like that before. And it really resonated with me differently about the explanation of resistance. Uh, so food for thought, I invite you to chew on that. Again, I invite you to 
check out the last two episodes that we did, 32 and 36, and we're going to be having some more of these episodes. So feel free to send in your questions. You can send them to admin at joyfulmedium.com. And what Crystal does often is kind of reduce things to a to a common theme. So perhaps in the future we might be, you know, reading the the person's name or reader XYZ and and, or listener XYZ and here's the question. Um, But often she's reducing them into a theme. So your confidentiality can be protected if you'd like. Uh, But I, I am just so excited to be able to share this part of my gift and to be able to share this wisdom from this incredible collective. I'm so grateful. Thank you, Violet Flame. I'm so grateful that they are working with us. Uh, I'm so grateful to Crystal for her friendship and her facilitation. She is a powerful uh, energy healer in her own right and a psychic. Uh, (laughs) We don't don't necessarily all like to be called that. Um, She's highly intuitive in, in her own right and a really powerful at holding space. So I'm so grateful to her as well. Uh, And I am so thankful for you for joining me inside Spirit Speakeasy. I'll see you next time. 